So let's um, work with IP tables in UFW. If I type IP tables, which is our firewall configuration program from the command line here, I can do IP tables hyphen capital L hyphen lowercase v. And that's just going to list our IP tables rules right now. I've had this running for a while, so you can see we've got some counters that are in effect here. And we can clear those counters. A quick Google for IP tables clear counters, turn that up. But uh, we can see that I've got three chains. I've got an input chain, which is what happens when packets are received on this computer. I've got a forward chain, which is what happens if this computer is acting like a router. Um, we would call that uh, masquerading, or if there's any kind of network address translation happening. We can apply different rules here. And then output is what happens if this computer tries to reach out on its own and send packets. What rules are we going to apply? And we can see the default policy on these are accept right now. So there's no firewall in effect here at all. Uh, if I were to come to my Windows machine, and I'll type in IP space ADDR here, we can see that my IP address is 192.168.68.125. If I try to ping 192.168.68.125, and I have a virtual box running Linux here that has its network card in bridged configuration, we can see that it does return that ping because it's accepting everything on that input chain. Now we can change the default behavior. We can go IP tables, for example, um, hyphen hyphen policy. And then I can say, okay, for the input chain, let's change that to drop. If I do my IP tables hyphen L hyphen lowercase v, we can see that the policy now has changed to drop. And if I try that ping again on that input, the default behavior is going to be the computer is going to just drop the packet. So for someone who's remote, they don't even know, they don't know if there's a computer here or not. It just looks like the request was timed out. All right, so I'm going to change that input back to accept for now. And I'm going to put it back into its default configuration. Now let's look at what happens when we run UFW. Because UFW is called the uncomplicated firewall, but it does some complicated things to IP tables. So um, first of all, let's see, let's just do it. I'm going to run uh, UFW enable. And that's a pretty solid thing to do on a Linux machine. That's going to enable a lot of different firewall rules. This machine is now going to drop um, lots of different packets when it receives them. Uh, it's going to do a lot of checking when you're sending packets out. Um, so this UFW enable is pretty well put together. It's a pretty simple thing you can do on Ubuntu to kind of secure the system. But now let's do our IP tables, hyphen L, hyphen lowercase v, and look at all the chains that it created. So up here at the very top, we've got our UFW, um, let's go way up to the top here. Here's our input, our forward, and our output, and you can see that it's created um, lots of different rules here. for those three chains and then it came down and it created chains like UFW after input, UFW after logging forward, right? And so we have all of these complicated rules that have sort of been added. Um, so I, if I were to even do, but the, the problem lies in if you want to work with IP tables and you were to do a UFW disable and I look at those IP tables again, yes, they're no longer in effect but I still have all of these chains on the system. You can see that the, most of the rules have been cleared at this point, um, but I still have all of these chains that are kind of clogging things up. All right, so let's take a look actually at our three default chains up at the top here. We've got our input, our, out, our forward, and our output, and we've got these different groups of rules that are still applied here. And you can see that these are actually chains that are linked down here. So it'll look at the chain and then apply whatever rules are applied down there. Um, we still need to clear those out. So in order to clear your uh, IP tables rules, you use IP tables hyphen capital F. 
and that stands for flush. And that will flush the three default chains, input, output, and forward. Uh, if we're using masquerading or network address translation, you would do something like hyphen T nat hyphen F. But in this case, hyphen F just clears those three chains. So let's take a look at it. And if I go back up again to our three default rules, input, forward, and output, you can see now that those references to all those other chains have been cleared. And so it's still pretty messy right now if we're trying to create IP tables. Um, let's go ahead and let's eliminate these extra chains. And you just do a quick Google for UFW, um, or IP tables, delete UFW chains. And there are lots of easy solutions here. Essentially what this does is it uh, looks through your IP tables and it looks for anything that's called UFW here. And you can see all of these start with UFW. And it'll basically run hyphen F and then that and then hyphen X and then what it found. And so IP tables hyphen X and then like UFW before logging is going to delete that chain. So these two lines right here will delete all of those extra UFW chains. And again, that's pretty easy to find on Google. I'm just going to go ahead and run it just to prove the point. And I'll do an IP tables hyphen L hyphen V. And you can see we're back to our input, our forward, and our output. And we have everything into accept mode. So let's create a rule now. Um, let's go ahead and apt install SSH. And we'll install an SSH server, and then we're just going to do a quick block. I'm going to pause the video while it installs our SSH server. Okay, so here's my host Windows machine that's on the machine that's underneath VirtualBox here. And you can see it's at 192.168.68.127 is my Windows machine. So I'm going to open up PuTTY in the default state just to prove that it can be done. And I'm going to try to SSH to 192.168.68.125. And it's going to say yes, and it's going to prompt me for a login here. It's going to say, okay, we can get to SSH. So let's selectively block this IP address, 192.168.68.127. And let's keep it from logging in. So I'll do an IP tables hyphen A for append to the input chain. And this is uh, the protocol is TCP because SSH is a TCP protocol, hyphen S, which is the source address, 192.168.68.127. Uh, and that is my Windows machine. We want to keep that one right there. The destination port in this case is port 22. We're going to do a hyphen J drop. Let's do our IP tables hyphen L hyphen V just to take a look. We can see that I now have a drop rule that says SSH is our destination port. Anything coming from here will be dropped. And as you probably would assume, if I were to 192.168.68.125, the IP address of our Ubuntu machine. Try to open that. It's going to hang. And we are blocking from that IP address. Now, just to prove that another IP address can get in, here I am on, uh, here's another machine on my network, 192.168.68.118. If I open up PuTTY and I try to 192.168.68.125, it's going to allow this other machine to get in, but now we've selectively blocked just one IP address on the network from attempting to SSH or connect on port 22 to this machine. Now, an excellent thing to do if you have an SSH server that's on the internet that's exposed, anything that's got port 22 on the internet is going to get hit all the time. And you're going to see lots of login attempts of people trying to use root, automated processes. Um, there's a program. It's an apt install. And by default, um, it's fail to ban. And by default, that'll create an IP tables rule 
that says, okay, if someone tries to log in on port 22 more than three times within two minutes, disallow that IP address from trying to SSH in again for another five minutes. And we can also do that just with IP tables. So if I wanted to block 192.168.68.127 only in the event that this IP address had tried to log in three times already and failed, therefore we don't want them logging in anymore, here's what that rule would look like. First I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to IP tables hyphen F. I'm going to flush my IP tables. We can see that that's flushed. And here's what that particular rule would look like. And this one looks like IP tables hyphen A input, protocol TCP. Hyphen M is a match name uh, for like a module. And in this case, we want to match the state, which in this case, this is going to be new connections to the machine. So we're going to match the module state. And we're going to say the state is going to be new to the machine. Um, we're going to update that using the recent module. And uh, every 60 seconds, if we get a hit count of four, or we can change that to whatever on port 22, then drop the connection. Um, so this will actually drop for 60 seconds. No, this will probably drop it, I think, permanently after if we get four counts within 60 seconds. And so we'll do IP tables hyphen L hyphen V, and we can kind of see what that looks like now. And so that's good um, prevention there to keep, uh, you know, the bad guys sort of off your trail. If you've got an SSH server that you need open on the internet, um, you want to prevent that brute force, but just make sure in this case you don't accidentally type your password in incorrectly four times. I'm not sure if this will drop for 60 seconds or if it's looking for four hit counts within 60 seconds. But let's find out. Hold on. Yep, and it looks like this one will lock you out um, after four tries. So how do we save these? If we were to reboot the system right now, um, all of this rule that we created would be lost on reboot. And so we have the IP tables save command, which essentially generates this generated text here, but we haven't actually saved anything. There are a couple of ways to go about this. You can use IP tables save in conjunction with IP tables restore, or you can apt install IP tables hyphen persistent. We'll go ahead and uh, install that real quick. I'm going to say, do you want to save them currently? Okay, that works. And so after installing IP tables persistent, essentially it's just created, it's added a piece to the boot process here that this computer will run IP tables restore every time it's restarted. And it will look in Etsy IP tables um, rules v4 and rules v6 for that text that's been saved. And essentially it's running IP tables restore Etsy IP tables rules v4 every time the computer boots up now. So there's your primer on IP tables. I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.